So Senate Budget Committee Chairman Bernie Sanders appeared on CNN for an interview and the entire interview like wasn't terrible, but there's a moment in there like a highlight or a low light to be specific uh, that I want to point out that really demonstrates every single thing that is wrong with mainstream media, corporate owned media. Every critique that I have is like encapsulated in this one clip because it proves that when it comes to mainstream media, there's just no room for nuance. Everything is presented as, you know, Democrat versus Republican, this false equivalence to where both sides are equal and both sides make, you know, equal cases and they're both good faith actors. And you can never actually like qualitatively assess situations. You can't be impartial or objective. You have to be neutral and present both sides equally. When the reality of the situation is that both sides aren't equal, Republicans have gone off the deep end. This is a party that isn't just concerned about, you know, smaller government and gun rights. This is a party that is insane and authoritarian. And Democrats aren't great as well. But the differences between Democrats and Republicans are pretty substantial. Uh, so basically, what the CNN anchor is going to ask Bernie Sanders is ridiculous because she's going to present two things. She's going to say, look, you claim that budget reconciliation is a bad thing, but you apply this argument, curiously so, to Republicans when they passed legislation. But now, all of a sudden, you're saying that we can do all of these things using budget reconciliation. So doesn't that kind of make you... Uh, I don't know, a hypocrite? Bernie Sanders' response here is absolutely phenomenal because he shuts it down. And what should really be pointed out here is what she's referring to. And, you know, the, just look at the way that she disregards the actual substance of, like, when Republicans use the budget reconciliation and why Bernie Sanders wants to use it. Like, when Republicans did it, it was in service to their donors. When Bernie Sanders does it, well, it is in service to the American people during a pandemic when they need relief immediately. Take a look. So you've suggested that Democrats might need to use a process called reconciliation, which requires only yes. 51 votes instead of the 60 to pass the coronavirus relief plan. You just heard Mitt Romney say that Republicans like him have shown that they are ready to compromise. So should Democrats move to pass coronavirus relief with 51 votes if they can't get Republicans support, say, before the impeachment trial? Well, I don't know what the word compromise means. I know that working families are in living today in more economic desperation than since the Great Depression. And if Republicans are willing to work with us to address that crisis, welcome, let's do it. But what we cannot do is wait weeks and weeks and months and months to go forward. We have got to act now. That is what the American uh, people want. Now, as you know, reconciliation, which is a Senate rule, was used by the Republicans under Trump to pass massive tax breaks for the rich and large corporations. It was used as an attempt to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Uh, and what we are saying is, you use it for that, that's fine. We're going to use reconciliation, that is 50 votes in the Senate plus the vice president, to pass legislation desperately needed by working families in this country right now. You did it, we're going to do it, but we're going to do it to protect ordinary people, not just the rich and the powerful. And what's your timeline on that? as soon as we possibly can. Look, Donna, you know, I know these are crazy times. We've got a new president in. We're dealing with the horrors of this pandemic, which also have got to be addressed immediately. We have not done a good job in producing the amount of vaccine that we need and certainly getting it into the arms of people. Do you want it done before the, the impeachment trial starts? we got to do everything. I mean, this is not, you don't have the time to sit around, you know, weeks on impeachment and not get vaccines into the arms of people. You don't have time to worry about vaccines and not be able to fact that children in America are going hungry. we got to break through this old approach that the Senate takes years and years to do anything. we got a crisis right now. We can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. The American people are hurting, and they want us to act. That's what our candidates ran for in this mm -hmm. election. That's what the guys in Georgia won on. And we have got to reaffirm the faith of the American people in government that we can respond to their pain. You mentioned that Republicans have used the so-called reconciliation process before, like in 2017, to try to kill Obamacare. 
Um, you accused them of abusing the process back then. You said, quote, the function of reconciliation is to adjust federal spending and revenue, not to enact major changes in policy. But uh, you alluded to this. You are the chairman of the budget committee are going to be. You are already talking about using this tactic for things like paid family and medical leave, for universal pre-K and child care, for climate change, tuition-free college. Uh, eliminating student debt and the $15 minimum wage. How is that not what you criticize Republicans for doing? Well, the devil is in the details of what we want to do and when we want to do it and when we have to do it. What we are talking about, by the way, are two separate reconciliation packages. Number one, the emergency one right now. Right. Get direct checks. Get those checks into people's pockets right now so they can feed their families. And make sure that people are not evicted from their homes. Make sure that states have the funds they need to get vaccines into people's homes. That's what we've got to do right now. And then as soon as that is done, we have to rebuild this economy. Unemployment is much, much too high. Wages are much, much too low. There are structural problems that we have had, we have ignored for years. Climate change is a reality. And you're okay doing all of that through this process that you criticize Republicans for using? This, these are major policy well, changes. These are major policy changes, but the devil is in the details. And I criticize Republicans, yeah, for using reconciliation to give tax breaks to billionaires, to create a situation where large profitable corporations now pay zero in federal income taxes. Yes, I did criticize them for that. And if they want to criticize me for helping to feed children who are hungry or senior citizens in this country who are isolated and alone and don't have enough food, they can criticize me. I think it's the appropriate step forward. So that was absolutely terrible. Terrible. Now, I don't know if that CNN host actually believes that. Maybe she was just playing devil's advocate and she didn't actually believe that both of these things are equal. But either way, the image that this presents to the viewer is that they are equal. The implication, like what viewers are primed to believe, is that Democrats shouldn't use budget reconciliation. Specifically, Bernie Sanders shouldn't advocate for this position because he criticized Republicans for using budget reconciliation, except the difference there is huge. Republicans used budget reconciliation to pass things that serve the elites, tax cuts for the rich. There is a need. This is an objective fact. There is a need right now because we are in a pandemic an economic crisis and for Democrats to use budget reconciliation to quickly pass relief, that is different than Republicans passing tax cuts at the behest of their corporate donors. Why are mainstream news pundits incapable of pointing out this difference? It's not about quantity. It's about quality. And when I say quantity, I mean, well, you know, we criticized Republicans, so now we have to criticize Democrats. We have to be equal, go straight down the middle. That's not the way that this works. You have to be objective. These two things are not the same. Using budget reconciliation to pass policies that benefit people who desperately need it compared to Republicans using budget reconciliation to pass policies that benefit folks who don't need it. These are very different things. So, of course, to just take Bernie Sanders' argument about budget reconciliation that he applied to Republicans as if, like, politics occurs in a vacuum, that's just, it's nonsensical. But Bernie's answer was perfect. He says, if Republicans want to criticize me for helping to feed children who are hungry or senior citizens in this country who are isolated and alone and don't have enough food, they can criticize me. And that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Because what Bernie Sanders is doing is trying to use budget reconciliation to help people who are dying, who are losing health care. When Republicans did it, it was because they know they couldn't get it passed with 60 votes. And they knew they had to deliver for their corporate donors if they wanted to keep that gravy train going. Very, very giant difference there. The difference is night and day. And what the media doesn't realize is that you don't have to give Republicans the benefit of the doubt. You don't always have to do this. In fact, you don't have to give any party the benefit of the doubt. But I mean, these are propaganda outlets. They're owned by large multi-billion dollar companies. 
Uh, so, you know, they're going to serve the status quo, but it's infuriating because they never give the left and progressives the benefit of the doubt. Like Bernie Sanders, he is approached as like this sort of villain who's a hypocrite for daring to use budget reconciliation after he spoke out against it. But that's just like stripping away all of the context from everything that he's saying, all to do what? Some pathetic pseudo defense of Republicans who already think that CNN is fake news? Like, I just don't understand the point of this. It doesn't accomplish anything. You're not going to win over Republican viewers because they probably don't even watch Fox News very much anymore. More. They've all, like, moved on to OAN and Newsmax because Fox News isn't even as far right as the Republican Party's base wants it to be. But all you do by presenting this narrative is you make viewers believe that both sides are equal when they are not equal. Both sides are not equal at all. One side does not do anything for the American people. And Bernie Sanders does want to do something for the American people. He's trying to push Democrats to actually get stuff done. And he's using his position as budget committee chairman to do just that, using reconciliation. So I, I shouldn't have to say this. Like, I shouldn't have to explain to people who likely went to college for journalism uh, how this should work. Like, you shouldn't have to learn about objectivity and impartiality from a YouTube host. Like, we don't care about neutrality. We know this, right? When it comes to objective facts, we care about actually saying what is and isn't objectively true. And there is a difference, like it or not, between Bernie's use of budget reconciliation and Republicans' use of budget reconciliation. If Bernie decided to go rogue and use budget reconciliation to, like, give Amazon a tax credit, then that would be comparable to the way that the Republicans did it. But because he doesn't want to do that because he's trying to use it for good, you should explain that to your audience, not present them with this false equivalence that Bernie Sanders is as bad as Republicans. Like, that's absolutely ludicrous. So I'll leave that there. I think you get the point. This was a very, very uh, bad segment from CNN, and it, it really it, it shows why mainstream media is bad, and it just makes people stupid overall.